Super Mario Makers 2 is an awesome game, and we're going to take the classic Nintendo Switch, make a gigantic version, and build an actual real scene in real life of Mario Maker 2 and make an awesome diorama. We're going to use some old school and some new school techniques, and when we're all done, we're going to fill the screen with some epoxy resin. But in order to do this, I'm going to need to call in the experts. My name is Troy, this is Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff. The boys are gonna have to design their levels. That's right, their levels. So if this project wasn't gonna be hard enough, I'm gonna go ahead and make two dioramas, now I make it twice as hard. Anyway, while they're off doing that, having fun playing video games, I'm gonna go ahead and load up Blender here and see if I can't design the Nintendo Switch itself. The first thing I did was load a picture of a Nintendo Switch in the Blender, and I used this to get the proportions of this model right. I made a really big box and kind of cut it out and hollowed it out so I'd have somewhere to build the diorama inside of. Then I traced out the controller sides, made them super fat to fit the box, simply mirrored them and moved around the buttons to make the left and right Joy-Con controllers. Turned the minus into a plus and pretty much had both of these controllers done. Then I found some letters on Thingiverse, loaded them in the blender and just used a boolean modifier to subtract them out of the buttons. And this is what the thing looked all done and rendered up. I tried to put as much detail in it as I could. Next I sliced it up. This first big print was going to take one day and 12 hours, cost just over 10 bucks. And then the left and right side of these Joy-Con controllers both took about a day and two hours and both cost around seven dollars. Again this project we're going to be rocking the Dynamic 3D filament. I really like this filament, it served me well in the past, but this time I've got some black, blue and red and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to achieve that Nintendo Switch like plastic look with very little painting involved. I can't wait to get this thing going, it's time to load this filament into the printer and get started. I loaded the filament into my longer LK5 Pro printer. If you're interested in this printer, I'll link some details of it below. I also used my Perusa printer and I had both of these things running to get these prints going. Here's the blue controllers at 5% complete and the first body at 5% complete. After a couple days, the first body was done and so were the blue controllers. Time to swap the blue out for red filament and get going on the other side. And the second body. All these prints came out really nice and the ceramic filament worked out really good again. The printing is all done. Now for the fun part, we're going to paint and build the diorama in here. But first thing we got to do is mash this thing up and get it primed. Use some Rust-Oleum gray primer to coat both of these things up. Then I went in and I painted the buttons black. Glued on the toggle switches that I printed. And put in some white lettering. While I was doing that, the guys were busy building their levels. Here's Lincoln's Super Mario 3 level he was working on. And they're really excited to show you these levels, so this is Lincoln's level. I'm gonna go and get this coin. Okay, I'm gonna get the coins. Get the coins. Stamp on the Oh yeah, why not? Um, yeah. Yeah, win, yeah, win, yeah! And then we can see Wyatt's world.
Next, I mix some Maj Paj and some Brilliant Blue and some Grasshopper Green together from Deco Arts to try to match that Mario Brothers 3 color. And me and the boys went to town and started painting this first body up. This took about four coats and all. Then I used a ruler here, got some quick measurements. And I was planning on making all this stuff a little bit bigger, just so I wouldn't use as much epoxy. Most of this stuff was made out of Styrofoam SM. I ripped it down the size with my table saw. Painted the first piece up in white. And then painted the second piece up in tan. I also mixed these paints with Maj Paz as well. I had these little screws lying around, so I thought this would look pretty cool to try to match that Mario Brothers 3 style. I put them in the corners. A jumbo popsicle stick that I cut up to make a sign. Washed it with some sapia to give it a stain. Then I used this little sculpting tool here to give the ground some texture. Added in a line, kind of scraped at it a bit just to make uh, a little bit of a ground texture here. Then I painted it up. And the reason why I mix all this paint with Maj Paj is because I was a little bit worried that the resin might react poorly to the acrylic paints. And I just wanted to try to protect it. I was also a little bit worried that it was going to melt some of the star foam. So I tried to give it as much protection as I could. Just glued some coffee stir sticks together to give myself a little bit of a guide to kind of make these things nice and even. Added the coloring to the ground. Next I use some hobby foam to make the trees or plant life or whatever that stuff is that you see in the background of these games. and my sculpting tool to just kind of press in some textures. Next up, some more white craft foam, and I just made the clouds. And then I printed some Mario blocks. This is for Wyatt's World. This is the underground brick texture. I just kind of freehand this on the foam, engraving it. I didn't really know what to do with the top, so I just tried some lines straight across. Then I tried to match that underground blue color. And here's the little green sign that you see at the end of the world. Kind of cool that Lincoln's World starts in the beginning and White's ends in the end. Next up, it was time to print some Mario miniatures. Most of these things I found on Thingiverse for free. I'm using some Nova 3D white resin here. It's the first time using this stuff, so I loaded it into my printer and I was really excited to try it. And I must say, the prints came out beautifully. A very nice resin to work with. This is the first print here, and the second print with Bowser and Fireball Mario. All came out perfect. Now that the miniatures are all printed up, it's time to go ahead and paint them up. And I'm really looking forward to this because these Mario characters are just so classic. I can't wait to get some colors on them. My plan is to take some reference images and just do like basic solid color scheme here, try to achieve that video game look. Come on guys, let's get at it. 
I prime these up with some Stonewall Gray. And I like to use my airbrush here on these flesh tones because it lays down a nice smooth coat and covers really well. Whites and bones and yellows are all really hard colors to paint with a brush, so that's why I use my airbrush here. Even on this Koompa, this yellow like skin tone turned out really nice. It's a Minotaur High from Army Painter D&D brand, and I painted up these Goombas. Contrast paints from GW came in handy when I was doing the shells. I've done a few green and a few in red, so I've got a few extra miniatures kicking around. Next up, some white and some black for the eyes, brown for the boots. Mario had some magic blue from Vallejo, one of my favorite colors. Nice FW acrylic inks, reds. This is a nice bright red for the rest of his hat and his um, shirt and stuff. White gloves and brown boots. The piranha plant, I use some Deco Art Metallics. This is the first time I'm using these metallics from Deco Art. Uh, it took about four coats, but it did make for a really nice metallic green color. Bowser's looking sharp here. I used some bloody red to do his hair and his eyebrows. And the rest of the colors of what you see me use already. Fireball Mario had the same bloody red for his orangey red coveralls. If you want to see more builds of miniatures and terrain and dioramas and all sorts of cool stuff, go ahead and join the facility by smashing that subscribe button. Thanks! All these miniatures are looking real sharp and they're ready to go into their levels. And speaking of levels, it's time to take a look at the sponsor for this video, LV427 Designs. LV427 Designs makes some amazing sci-fi modular corridor terrain STL files across all aspects of the genre from Aliens to Star Trek. Their 3D printable files are printer friendly and with some simple techniques like color priming, washing, dry brushing, you can build an inspiring starship or an industrial facility in no time. Your only limitation is your imagination. Follow the link in the description to check out everything LV427 has to offer. Okay, the boys are back and we're ready to build our Mario Maker 2 scenes in real life. And first, we're doing Wyatt's right here. And then we're going to do Lincoln's. What do you think about that, Wyatt? Uh, uh, yeah, it's build right now. Yay! Yay! You ready? Yeah! Okay. Yeah! Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It took a lot of work to get to this point, but this was a really satisfying part of the project where me and the kids started to build these little levels. Use some Elmer's white glue here to kind of glue these pieces into place. And I'm super gluing the little Mario blocks together as well. The little end flag. I put Bowser in place roughly where the blocks were going to go eventually. The Goombas went in and Fireball Mario is going to be up here somewhere. Next up, the Mario Brothers 3 style. Me and Lincoln started to assemble these little blocks. I put some toothpicks in them to help hold them in place. And then I glued it into the level that we painted blue. Added these foam trees or shrubs or whatever they are in the background. Glued in my clouds. Added my little go sign. There's a little bush here in the corner. I stuck that in there. The piranha plant was next. Goombas and the Koompa 
And I also glued all these little blocks together. The part that we've all have been waiting for, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill these screens up with some resin. We're gonna go with two parts A, one part B, mix it together in this tub, and we're gonna do two pours. The first pour, we're gonna go about halfway, and that's so I can set the blocks in like a floating kind of style, and maybe put the Mario's and characters in there doing some jumps and stuff. I'm a little bit nervous about this because I'm worried that it's um, gonna react poorly with the paints and styrofoams, but there's only one way to do it, and that's just to go for it. I added part B first, followed by part A, and stirred it for about five minutes. I did the first pour off of camera, you can see here after about two days it was a little bit tacky so it was ready for layer two. But in order to make those floating blocks I had to add them now. A little cloud here to give some more 3D effects. And Mario in mid jump. I used crazy glue to hold all this down. Next up was White's World and I decided to add some fireballs. I felt like this level just needed something extra and Bowser's fireballs and the Mario fireballs really set this level off. Now for the second pour. There was a ton of bubbles. I used a lighter to remove the bubbles and every couple hours over the next day and a half I went back and hit it with a lighter again. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to remove all the bubbles, but I did an okay job with it. And here we go. These are the worlds. Looking really good with a screen full of resin. It's got a really cool 3D effect. And these things are going to look awesome hanging in the boys' rooms. The fireballs looks really cool in this one. At the end of the day, this project <laughs> cost about 400 bucks to make from start to finish, so it was a it was an expensive project, but it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed the process. And I want to say a really big thank you to my Patreon members. You guys rock, Michael, Kara, and Glenda. Thanks so much. And of course, there's some awesome videos on my channel. Check out the Ghostbuster pack build here. 